the next ideal we'll discuss is the idea of plane separation. But to start, we're going to define a convex set. For this, we'll need a few things to start with. We'll need some set S and two points A and B in that set, where the distance between A and B is less than alpha. And if all the points on the line segment of AB are in my set S, then it's called a convex set. So as an example, if I have a circle, this would be a convex set because no matter which two points I pick, if I draw the segment between them, it's completely contained in that set. Something like this, on the other hand, would not be convex because if I take this point A and this point B and try to draw the line segment between them, I have points that are no longer in the set. So this would not be convex. A quick theorem about convex sets. The intersection of two convex sets is convex. So let's prove this. So we start with two convex sets, S and T. In order to show it's con the intersection is convex, I need to take two points in the intersection and show that the line segment between them is in the intersection. So I'm going to pick two points A and B, such that A is in the intersection between S and T, B is in the intersection of S and T, and the distance between A and B is less than alpha. By definition of the intersection, we then know that both A and B belong to the set S, and A and B also belong to the set T. We're then going to let P be any point on the line segment AB. So we need to show that P is in the intersection. Since S is convex and A and B both belong to S, then the line segment has to be an S, so P needs to be an S. And the same thing holds for T. T is also convex, so that entire line segment's in T, including that point P. Since P belongs to both S and T, it must belong to the intersection. And since P was an arbitrary point, that means every point on that line segment is in the intersection. So I now have that the intersection of two convex sets is convex. The next thing I'm going to talk about before I define plane separation is the idea of angles in spherical space. So we did define angles in the last video and we talked about their measurement, but how do we actually measure angles on a sphere? So let's consider two rays that have a common endpoint on a sphere. So we actually do have a spherical angle. We're then going to find the tangent lines to these curves at the vertex. We then take the measure of the smallest angle between these tangents. While we will not actually do this directly, we're not actually going to find the tangent lines to the curves and try to measure the angle between them. That requires calculus 3, and it's a bit beyond what we're going to talk about here, but we can see the idea. We can picture these circles and their tangent lines and then measuring the angle between the tangent lines. So far, we've been dealing with Euclidean geometry, which is flat geometry. It's the geometry we learned in middle and high school. And spherical geometry, geometry on a sphere. I'm now going to define another geometry called the single elliptic geometry. And for this, we are going to start with a sphere. So let's consider a sphere, S. And we're going to identify points on S that are at opposite poles. So the idea being that if I have two points that are polar opposite, I'm going to consider those to be the exact same point. In this case, the maximal distance is alpha prime, which is alpha over 2, where alpha is the maximal distance on the sphere. So I'm cutting in the maximal distance by half. So let's try to visualize why this is the case. So here's my circle, which is a line on this sphere. And we're going to let B be a quarter of the way around the great circle from point A. So this is actually distance alpha over 2. And if I take a point P, we'll say here, 
is I move that point closer and closer and closer to B if I think of that point just kind of shifting over. Then the distance between A and P is getting closer and closer to alpha over 2. However, if I move the point over here, then remember it's identified it's the same point as its polar opposite. So it's also this point here. So its distance is still less than alpha over 2. As I move it further past B, my distance is actually getting closer and closer to A. It's actually getting closer and closer to 0. So the maximum distance is going to be alpha over 2. We then have that rays are only a quarter arc of the great circle instead of a half. A segment is going to be any subarc of that, so anything less than a quarter of the way around the circle, whereas in spherical geometry it would be less than halfway around the circle. And you can check, but this modified geometry here does satisfy all of my axioms so far. So, so far I have two models for all of my axioms that have a finite distance. Spherical geometry and this new one. So let's talk a little bit more about this. So here I have my full sphere. I'm going to consider the equator to be a line L. And A is some point not on the line. In particular here it's on the front of the sphere. We can't actually tell which side of L this lies on if it lies in the northern or southern hemisphere. In spherical geometry, I could definitely say that A lies in the southern hemisphere. But I can't do it here because, remember, A is identified with its polar opposite now on the back of this sphere. So A is in both the northern and the southern hemisphere. And that seems like a problem. In this geometry, every line only has one side. We can't talk about which side of the line that we're on. And this is essentially our motivation for our next axiom in our geometries. So axiom 9 is our plane separation postulate. The plane separation postulate says for every line L in my plane, there are two regions or sets, H1 and H2, such that three things are going to hold. The first thing is that every point in the plane belongs to one and only one of the following, L, H1, or H2. So every single point must be either on the line, in region H1, or in region H2. And you can't belong to multiple ones. You have to be in only one of those three. The second condition, H1 and H2 are non-empty and convex. So you need at least one point in each of them and they are convex sets. So for every two points in H1, the line segment between them is completely in H1, and the same thing for H2. And then finally, if A is in H1 and B is in H2, so they're each in one of these sets, then my line L intersects any segment between A and B. So not just the straight line segment, but even if I draw a weird curvy one between A and B, the line L must intersect that segment. Essentially, to get from one region to the other, I have to pass through L. So the idea of this is to be able to talk about the sides of the line. And this is going to eliminate that single elliptic geometry that I was talking about before. So that's no longer going to be a model now that I've introduced this new axiom.